And the Hyperloop sets in motion. Still very cautiously, but one day it is supposed to shoot through the tube at almost the speed of sound. However, for now, it can only manage walking speed. The 24-meter-long test tube in Otterbrunn near Munich is not long enough for more. But what has been shown here is that the technology works. For project manager Gabriel Semino, this is the means of transportation of the future. What the Hyperloop has in common with the train is that it can start from the city center. This means that when you go to a Hyperloop station in the future, you will start in the city center and not somewhere outside the city, like at an airport. What we are planning is essentially flying on the ground with the same travel speed and similar travel time. By the end, the cabin is supposed to reach 900 kilometers per hour. The 600 kilometers from Munich to Berlin would be covered in a mere 40 minutes. A regular flight would take about an hour for that same distance. Despite the record time, the Hyperloop would use only as much energy as a regular ice train. The secret lies in minimizing friction. To enable the Hyperloop to reach high speeds, it must not touch the track during the entire ride. This is achieved by incorporating a levitation system. Specifically, what we have here is a so-called electromagnetic levitation system. Additionally, the capsule needs to be propelled. This means there is a linear motor in the track that pulls the capsule. The propulsion system is integrated into the track. The floating cabin is magnetically pulled forward, contactless and without moving parts. This reduces friction. What remains is air resistance, which plays an increasingly significant role as the speed picks up. This is also true for the Hyperloop because it is designed to be fast. After all, we are also in a vacuum tube. This is essentially a sealed vessel from which we can remove the air using powerful vacuum pumps. We then achieve 1% of atmospheric pressure, which is 10 millibars in technical terms. At 1% of atmospheric pressure, there is significantly reduced air resistance, even at high speeds. In Bavaria, the people are convinced. The state is supporting the construction of the test track. For the opening, Prime Minister Markus Söder visited the vacuum tube and the travel capsule, or rather the bridge of the enterprise. Yes, that fits, because everything here indeed seems like science fiction. However, the idea is not new at all. It dates back to the 18th century. The idea was revived in 2012 by Elon Musk, who presented his vision and initiated a competition. The goal was to find the best pod, meaning the passenger cabin, which would then be sent through the test tube in the USA. Students from all over the world participated, including a 25-member team from the Technical University of Munich. Between 2015 and 19, we built four such prototypes for the four competitions that took place, and we won each of them. Since then, we have started building the Hyperloop in full scale. Back then, they were relatively small. Now we aim to build the Hyperloop as we envision it for passenger travel in the long term. However, the first passenger ride was achieved in 2020 by the American competitor Hyperloop One from the Virgin Group. In the meantime, however, they are focusing on the transport of goods. Freight is much less demanding than people after all. It doesn't need to breathe or use the toilet, for example. Here in Otterbrunn, they are still committed to the idea of using it as a means of travel. Currently, 86 scientists from 28 countries are working on the project. Their next task, fine-tuning. In particular, we need to make further advancements in our control algorithms for both the levitation and propulsion system to achieve even more stable levitation and energy-efficient travel. This will be our focus in the coming months. The goal is to ensure the journey is as comfortable as possible so that passengers barely notice they are levitating and experience smooth, pleasant acceleration forward. 
komfortabel und schnell reisen. Comfortable and quick traveling. Additionally, it's all electric, which means it could even be climate neutral if the electricity is generated from renewable sources. It all sounds almost too good to be true. And yes, as usual, there are some drawbacks. For instance, will it be possible to build a tube hundreds of kilometers long that remains airtight over time? Or how do you rescue passengers in the event of an accident in the enclosed tube? On top of that, there are the costs. Scientists at TU Munich estimate 26 to 32 million euros per kilometer. That would be 15 to 19 billion euros for the Berlin-Munich connection alone. Not exactly a bargain. First, however, further and especially larger scale testing needs to be conducted. We now plan to apply everything we have learned here to longer segments. In the next step, we plan to build approximately one kilometer of track, which will allow us to test higher speeds. Subsequently, we aim to construct even longer tracks, thinking in terms of 10 kilometers or more, where we can achieve full speed and demonstrate that the technology has reached the necessary maturity. In about seven years, these advancements are expected to be achieved and the problems resolved. If that succeeds, the dream of fast, comfortable and climate-neutral travel could indeed become a reality. It feels special every time, even if you've done it before. It's always a pleasure to travel with the Hyperloop. Well then, have a good flight.